the speaker. Whereas is provided on the section 63 one of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 15.0 on the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by an affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or other financial institution for the capital or current expenditure of government. And whereas it is further provided under Section 64 of the Act that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister of Finance considers it necessary to borrow an amount of US dollars, 6 million, the loan, from the African Export Import Bank to finance the construction of social infrastructure and other facilities damaged or destroyed by tropical storm breaths under an education re rehabilitation climate linked facility. And whereas the loan is repayable in seven years, commencing from the date of disbursement of the loan, inclusive of a grace period of two years. And whereas the loan is repayable in equal semi-annual installments on the 40th day of June and 41st day of December of each year after the grace period. And whereas interest is payable at the rate of 6% per annum, be it resolved that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow the amount of 6 million US dollars from the African Export Import Bank to finance the construction of social infrastructure and other facilities damaged or destroyed by tropical storm breaths under an, an education rehabilitation climate linked facility. Be it further resolved that the loan is repayable in seven years commencing from the date of disbursement of the loan inclusive of a grace period of two years. The loan is repayable in equal semi-annual installments on the 40th day of June and the 41st day of December of each year after the grace period. Interest is payable at a rate of 6% per annum. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this motion is not simply a finance motion or financing mechanism, Mr. Speaker. It's a ideological shift, Mr. Speaker, and it also is a shift <coughs> from <coughs> a small island seeking, maintaining its old friends and seeking new ones. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this loan is from the African Export Income In Import Bank, Afinex Bank. And you may recall, Mr. Speaker, I came to this honorable house a few months ago and I asked the government, the honorable house, I asked the permission for me to sign on to membership of this bank, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, when I did that, I made a point that it was the beginning of a South-South dialogue. <coughs> where, as I repeat, we maintain our old friends, but they look for new ones, Mr. Speaker. And St. Lucia is one of the first countries to sign this agreement because St. Lucia was aware that in our external affairs posture, we had to look to the South so we can get some increased support and help for our country, for our country Mr. Speaker. And CARICOM signed on to agreement with, with the same bank for $1.5 billion for aid in loans and grants to the country of CARICOM, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, very quietly, St. Lucia went, went about his business, Mr. Speaker. And I want to thank the officials of the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Speaker, the Director of Finance, and the staff of the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Speaker, for the expeditious manner in which they worked on this facility, Mr. Speaker. So today, St. Lucia, if not the first, is one of the first countries, if not the first, but is one of the first countries, Mr. Speaker, to benefit from a loan from our brothers in Africa, Mr. Speaker. And we make no bones, we're not afraid to say, Mr. Speaker, is from our brothers in Africa, Mr. Speaker. Because this is part of our heritage. 
It's part of our history, Mr. Speaker. And as we try to deny it, and try to circumvent it, and try to do all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker, our heritage, our history of all the peoples of the region started, and part of that history, Mr. Speaker, comes from Africa. And Africa has some of the world's fastest developing countries, Mr. Speaker. Only what you hear about Africa from some sections of the press, Mr. Speaker, is bad news. That's all you hear is bad news. All you hear is news of wars, etc. Africa has its problems, Mr. Speaker. But there are many good things happening in Africa. And the African Export Import Bank, Mr. Speaker, is one of the good things that happen in Africa, Mr. Speaker. And we are going to be in increasing our work with the bank, Mr. Speaker, because the bank has a payment system that we are trying to, we are trying <coughs> to see if we can get the official the Ministry of Finance are working on it. So you can use that payment system, Mr. Speaker, to help us with some of the issues we have in <coughs> international payments, Mr. Speaker. Some time ago, we came to this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker, and we asked for us to be able to do some repairs for Hurricane Brett, Mr. Speaker. And you may have heard that some time ago, the opposition was blaming me for the hot weather. <laughs> they blamed me for the, the heat. They blamed the Labour Party for the heat, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> but we know that climate change is a real situation. Climate change is real, Mr. Speaker. And after Hurricane Brett, well, it was never a hurricane, it was a storm. Fortunately, it did not become a hurricane. It was a storm, Mr. Speaker. There was damage to some of our schools, and we had to come here to go into the contingency fund to borrow two million dollars, Mr. Speaker, to borrow two million dollars or to use two million dollars from the contingency fund because we wanted to follow the Public Finance Management Act. We never quoted clauses that did not exist in the Public Finance Management Act. The Public Finance Management Act is clear as to how you deal with the contingency fund. It's very clear. So again, we came to Parliament, and we may have to come to Parliament again for a supplement, for supplementary budget to deal with some of the issues that, some of the expansion, some of the issues in the economy that we do not cater for. Some things that we do not cater for, some things we have to do. We may ask you something in the youth economy. I said, Mr. We'll come back. We will have the maturity and the honesty to come back in this honorable house and say that we may need a supplementary budget, Mr. Speaker. We're not going to make any excuses. We're not going to look for any clauses that didn't exist in the Public Finance Management Act. We're not going to do that, Mr. Speaker. So this loan of US $6 million is for rehabilitation of school infrastructure and other facilities damaged or destroyed after tro tropical storm breath, Mr. Speaker. And it's under an education rehabilit rehabilitation climate linked facility from the African Export <coughs> Bank, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, after the storm and from the stock taken by the Ministry of Education, 21 schools were damaged. 21 schools were damaged, Mr. Speaker. And the damage included minor things like damage to the roof coverings, but some of major, Mr. Speaker. Roof frame collapse, ceiling damage, water penetration, broken windows, and disruption in electricity, electricity supplies, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the school plant in St. Lucia, a lot of it is old and a lot of it needs repair and maintenance, Mr. Speaker. And we admit that. We admit it, Mr. Speaker. A lot of it maintains. But fact is, Mr. Speaker, for the money that is allocated to school plant repairs, we try to ensure that we get value for money, Mr. Speaker. And if you have to compare, Mr. Speaker, what is happening to school repairs with the money that we spend and compared to whether value for money was received, Mr. Speaker, in money that is spent before, the jury is still out. And that is why we moved, when we went government, we tried to get synergies and we tried to get benefits from moving school repairs 
from the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Infrastructure, where the core competency of the Ministry of Infrastructure is in repairs, is in infrastructure, is in buildings. So remove the unit from the Ministry of Education and allow the Ministry of Education to deal in its core competencies. That's education. So we, we took the burden of school repairs from them and we moved it to the Ministry of Infrastructure where there were all the experts, all the engineers, all the business specialists, Mr. Speaker. But again, again, Mr. Speaker, for reasons best known to the powers that be at the time, or probably it might be a way to rebalance, to rebalance the cabinet, to rebalance the, 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 the powers in the cabinet, Mr. Speaker, because you know, some of these cabinets, there is a lot of power play and power balancing. Invest the repairs were taken away from the Ministry of Infrastructure and were placed back in the Ministry of Education. And it was said that $10 million was spent in the Ministry of Education that year to repair schools, Mr. Speaker. I, and Mr. Speaker, there is a myth that is being, that is being said that we said that we only spent $1,000 in school repairs, $1 million in school repairs. Mr. Speaker, you know, these things are repeated. The million dollars that they speak about is basically cash that is, I think, just $10,000 that we gave to each principal to pay for liquor things, to buy a lock, to buy little things, $10,000, which is principal accounted for. But to tell the public that we spent a million dollars in school repairs is not true. The estimates, are there to, the estimates are clear to show what we spent. But you know, they perpetuate these lies. A million dollars in school repairs. That million dollars, each principal was given, I think, $10,000 or something for liquor expenses. So we always spent more than a million dollars in school repairs. We always spent one million in school repairs. But what we're doing now, Mr. Speaker, is that we are dedicating $6 million for school repairs. U.S. dollars, Mr. Speaker. $6 million, Mr. Speaker, for school repairs. $6 million U.S. dollars, Mr. Speaker. And these schools, Mr. Speaker, 16 schools, 16 out of the 21 schools that were damaged are going to be repaired. 16 other schools, Mr. Speaker. And again, Mr. Speaker, we do not build schools or we do not repair schools according to constituency. And the Minister of Education will be clear about this speaker. There are schools, I'll give an example. The Enchipo Secondary School, Mr. Speaker. Some of us went, some of my colleagues went to the Enchipo School, Mr. Speaker. There is a block in that school that is basically a hazard. But you know what I mean, Mr. Speaker? Because it's perceived, it's perceived that if you repair the eligible school, the part, oh no, no, you know, when they don't even think these things out, St. Lucia has no zoning. So that doesn't mean that children who go to that school are from Castries East. They are from all over the country. Because Selusha has no zoning. If Selusha has zoned, the only school that is zoned is the Bishop Gashi School, Mr. Speaker. And I want to announce today, today, I am building a brand new kitchen in the Bishop Gashi School. A brand new kitchen. I don't want, I don't want your applause. Hold it for yourself. I am building a brand new kitchen, Mr. Speaker. A brand new kitchen in the Bishop. That's a school that impacts in my constituency. But the Antipo school, people are from all over the country, all over the country. They refuse to fix it. And when they go in, and when they're doing, they were doing their house to house. PF fixing the Antipo school. PF fixing the Antipo school. Refuse to do it. But thankfully, we are going to begin repairs on the Antipo school because of that facility, Mr. Speaker. And again, the Antipo school is going to benefit people <coughs> island-wide. So, Mr. Speaker, we are going to repair, we are going to repair 16 out of the 21 schools, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, I want you to note, I want you to note that the interest rate on that loan is 6%. And, Mr. Speaker, the, that is 
And if you listened to me in my budget presentation, I made the point of the rising interest rates globally. You understand? Some of us here will want to pretend that the interest rates only rise for St. Lucia because they Labour party government. Interest rates are rising globally, Mr. Speaker. And if you look at the estimates, and if you look at to my, my budget speech, I made the point that the allocation for interest rates has to increase. I can't remember the exact figures because of the, the increase in global interest rates, Mr. Speaker. So this loan, Mr. Speaker, the interest rate is at 6% over seven years for two-year grace period. But what's important is that that loan was negotiated in less than three months, Mr. Speaker, because of the skill, because of the transparency, and because the accountability of the staff of the Ministry of Finance, Mr. Speaker. In less than three months, that loan was negotiated. My officials at Ministry of Finance went up there because they did not go up there with a minister telling them to <coughs> say this, say that, give this one the contract, make sure that one get the contract, make sure you look for that consultant, make sure that never happened. We don't get involved in that business. And, and the time will come when I'm going to speak about consultancy fees. Because there's been a myth on this about consultancy fees, Mr. Speaker. But you know, these things are going to be are going to be dealt with, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker let me tell you something, Mr. Speaker. Do you know? Do you know that in the World Bank project, there is a particular line for consultancy fees? But the World Bank has said that these consultancy fees, the consultants have to be tendered. The consultants have to be tendered, and the consultants are chosen by a tendering process. Do you know? The World Bank says that if you do not want these fees tendered, you must pay it from your own money. Pay for your money, do what you want. Your money, do what you want to fit. Just like the curated roads. You bring, you bring the roads here, you must tender it. The government <laughs> said that they will pay the consultancy cost fees themselves just to choose their own consultants. And I will not tell you, because it's not my style, I do not come in here and mention private citizens' name. I don't do it. I don't deal with politicians. No one can ever accuse me in my, in my public life of ever mentioning any private citizens' name on any platform. I don't get involved in that. You never hear me attack peers or or public servants or police. You never hear me say that the commissioner of police was not good. She's not fit to say that. We don't get involved in that. You'll never hear me say that. And I want you to fact check me. I've never called a public servant's name in my political career. I don't get involved in that. I deal with politicians. Politicians. That's what I deal with. And, I want, and politicians can deal with me. You understand? So they wanted what they said is that they remove consultancy from the tendering process and they choose the consultants themselves instead of allowing you to tender to give somebody else a fair chance. And you talk about consultancy fees? Compare health and security levy with consultancy fees? That's where you're going? <coughs> but the record will show what consultants were paid, how much they were paid, and what who choose the consultants, Mr. Speaker? But that's for another show. That's for another show. That's for another show. Because all these things you have banding around, Mr. Speaker. All these things you have banding around, Mr. Speaker. These things will come to light. They'll come to light. So, Mr. Speaker, the loan, as I said, is at six percent. But what's important, Mr. Speaker, is the six million dollar loan will trigger off the possibility of grant funding of two million dollars US from the Global Partnership for Education, GPE, which would otherwise have not access if we didn't get that loan, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with the grant, if we get a grant of US two million dollars, Mr. Speaker, the grant 
the grant will increase the facility, Mr. Speaker. So we hope increase the facility to eight million dollars, Mr. Speaker. So we hope that we can grant, we can get that that grant, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the twelve million dollars will also increase the country's debt portfolio. But we believe that once we are borrowing to improve the quality of life of the people, that borrowing is necessary. We will always borrow when we have to, to improve the quality of life of the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So this $6 million for the rehabilitation of schools, Mr. Speaker, is a worthwhile project. It's worthwhile because our children will get educated in better surroundings, Mr. Speaker. I'm talking about education, Mr. Speaker. The cabinet working with and the Minister of Education will expand. The cabinet, Mr. Speaker, we have taken a position that there should be one university graduate or one higher, higher education trained person in every household, Mr. Speaker. And the cabinet, with the help of the Caribbean Development Bank, we've just approved a $3 million facility, Mr. Speaker, to work to be used as a guarantee for people who don't have the income or who can't afford to send their children for higher education. So they, will, they, are, they, they do not have the assets, they don't have the security to send their children for higher education. Because we do not believe that poverty should stop you from being educated. We don't think that because you can't afford, because you can't afford to go to school abroad, Mr. Speaker, because you can't afford to go to school abroad, that you should not be educated. So if that facility of $3 million, is going, and the minister will expand, will be used to help people who cannot afford, who don't have the security, who don't have the name to be able to go to school abroad. It will help them to go to school to get educated in the future. So very soon, we'll be coming to this honorable house, to ask the honorable house to support the government in this $3 million facility, Mr. Speaker. That is what you call doing things for the, for the less fortunate people, educating them, exposing them to higher education, Mr. Speaker. That, that's what it is. And, doing, and this week, I think Thursday, the minister will expand. We are going to be launching the digital, the digital, the digital content for our education system, Mr. Speaker prepared by local people, right, Minister? Local people, Mr. Speaker. No, nobody from local people. And we're going to be using that content for our students in schools in this country. And I'm very proud of the Ministry of Education and the Minister of Education for that good part. So, Mr. Speaker, our record on education is clear. You can see what we've done. You can trace our progress as far as education is concerned. That is what we're doing for poor people. That's what we're doing for them. That's what we're doing for them. We're helping them. Because each one of us, each one of us, Mr. Speaker, we benefited from higher education. We benefited. And we want our children to do better than us. And we want the children of all people in the country to be exposed to higher education, Mr. Speaker. So this is what the government is doing. So Mr. Speaker, I ask members to support this motion, this, this resolution, and I look forward to, I think, Mr. Education work is happening on the Viewfort School. It's finished. We, the, we know, Mr. Speaker, that we went to, the member for Viewfort South is very concerned about the school. We're doing some work in there. 90% compete, Mr. Speaker. We hope to be competed before the end of the year. And the other schools, I, know, I think there's a school in, in Mont Rouge that, in Mont Rouge, that is the, uh, Chosel, right? Right. A school in Chosel that we're going to be repairing, a school in Chosel, in Mont Rouge, Mr. Speaker, and several other schools in the country. So I urge members to support this resolution. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.